the AIs will never replace human ingenuity, human creativity, uh, I don't think, and that, that that's a good thing. And I've been doubling down on my quote unquote humanity, you know, using the right brain, creating human things. Sure, yeah. yeah. I agree that humans will always want to work with humans and that we're going to always favor it in a lot of ways, especially because of the spontaneity, the creativity, the vibe. Mm-hmm. Kids love to use the word vibe, but we want the vibe and AI doesn't have the vibe. Kids are really good at detecting AI, really good at it. Well, they live they, with they it pick, all the time. Yeah, they pick it out lot, way before their parents. So they're really tuned into it. I think that's what's going to keep it at bay in terms of being a true creative tool for, for really a long time. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangel. Let's delve a little deeper. Here's the second part of my Clubhouse conversation about AI in podcasting. That's a really good point to make, that it, there's a very big difference between a live show and a, a, a pre-recorded show because, you know, you you have to do a lot of things on the fly. Um, when I make this into a podcast episode, I will be putting an intro onto it after having listened to all of this and having been involved in it and all of that. So then transcripts become really helpful and, yeah. you know, that that kind of uh, AI help might really be a good thing. (laughs) Do you do any like timestamp kind of, kind of links or show notes to the content that's produced here? See, I've been using Podium. Um, So Podium helps me with coming up with titles and it helps me with transcripts and it uh, does do some, some timestamps. Yeah. So it depends on what I feed into the, their algorithm, their, mm-hmm. you know, upload. And, uh, and it's been doing pretty well for me so far, but I've been wanting to test out something that I just bought on AppSumo called Minvo. And I know that Mark Ronick uses this a lot. So I wanted to give it a try and it does a transcript and all of that, as well as picking out clips. And I was using Opus Clip uh, to get my clips of my videos and i mean obviously i won't be able to do that here (laughs) but but there is that element that i also needed to replace if i was going to use minvo in place of podium and opus clip so there's yeah like you know minvo is fairly new from what i hear so that again is kind of starting to uh overwhelm the individual little software AI programs. So we're getting into that again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I have a lot of sunk cost into Opus Clip at this point. So I don't know. We'll see. It, it becomes quite an interesting and almost difficult transition because you get used to things that you're doing and then you have to transition to new ones that might very well do the job better, but you're used to the other stuff and that's part of your process. So, right. Yeah, it becomes a bit of, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, right? Yeah, <laughs> Janine, yeah there's a lot ahead. of tools out there to oh, yeah. to try out and things like that, especially on the on the video side. I, I, I can't, mm-hmm. I'm can't. trying to remember, um, didn't Adobe acquire an AI company called uh, Leonardo.ai, I thought? Uh, it's entirely possible. I don't recall. Yeah. But and yeah, maybe George That's a does. platform <laughs> that actually will create full... AI videos. So you can see the direction that they're, yeah. they're heading towards. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot that's going on. Yeah. Um, George isn't familiar. Well, so. a lot of this stuff is parlor tricks. I think that's uh-huh. the word, the phrase you hear. <laughs> yeah. And well, the thing is, we all like recognize the tech. parlor tricks. Right. So, you know, so then we had to just coalesce back to what really matters and what really connects with the, the audience after a while. We're all having a lot of fun with these tools you know the parlor tricks etc the thing that's going to be a little bit scarier i guess with ai is when there's a growing population of people that don't 
recognize when it's a parlor trick, you know, and that mm-hmm. it's actually being used for, for very bad things. We haven't seen it really happen too hardcore yet in this election cycle. There's still time, um, you know, with the presidential <laughs> election. But, you know, I hope I interviewed David, um, David Pogue earlier this year, and he's done a t- tremendous amount of AI research and experimenting. And he's like, it hasn't yet swung an election <laughs> that we know of. So maybe we shouldn't be too worried, but it's just something to think about. And I think about it all the time. And <laughs> Sure. I mean, it can definitely, it can be used for bad. <laughs> we can use it for evil. We totally can. But let's, you know, let's hope it doesn't come to that. I mean, yeah. uh, who knows? We're humans. It's going to happen. We just have to know how to recognize it. That's all. That's really what it'll come down to. Uh, yeah. Janine, It's going to have to be um, mandatory that it be yes. flagged. Yeah, right. definitely. <laughs> I mean, Go you, ahead, you're, you're already seeing that on uh, every platform, right? This was gener- generated with AI. It, it, rather you tag it or not, that's a different story. Even on YouTube, on Facebook, like, hey, this was generated with AI. So you're um, saying that, yes, I did use some of the AI. And AI is just a feature, right? It's not the actual product. And a lot of people are thinking that AI is the product, but the fact of the matter is, it's not. It's just a feature that every single company is going to want to uh, have access to and enable access to it. So the question is, how far is it going to go? Well, it's going to go as far as it can. And because people that are using different applications are, after all, people, they will want features that they found elsewhere to be in their own applications as well. That's why Every single platform now has stories and reels and AI. So that's just another new feature that's now being added. I mean, with the new operating system that Mac is releasing in just a few months, it's going to have AI generation built into your Mac and on your smartphone. Like, yeah. it's not going away. This is just the beginning, the, the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I think that's a key point there is that, is that we're in kind of, the infancy stage of all this, um, where this is going, um, is quite different than where we're at right now. So it's, it really gets back to once we reach that threshold of AGI, which is general intelligence, um, when the AI becomes actually smarter than humans, I would say that it probably already is in some regards, but it's not the same kind of intelligence that humans have. Um, and it's, but that day is coming. I don't know if it's five years from now, 10 years from now that it, it surpasses, you know, the ability to think and process information, um, better than a human, but I think it's coming. And once that happens, it's going to change everything. I wanted to pose a question about ethics in terms of using AI, you know, so with publishing, um, you know, I understand it's, um, you know, there's, again, infancy here, right? It, law takes an extremely long time. You know, the law and governance and everything else moves very slowly, regulation. But, like, is there is there a mandate to ethically to divulge how much you use AI in anything you do? Like, I'm, I'm working on my first book. I'm taking a page out of Larry Roberts, <laughs> to coin a phrase. Um, book on generating a book with AI, and I'm I'm doing I'm tackling my own. I I wouldn't be tackling a book right now if I didn't have AI to help me. There's no chance in heck I could have the time to do it, but I'm doing it now thanks to AI. But is it really make? Do I really need to divulge how much of the book was using AI versus not? Is it kind of like saying I may have used Grammarly and spell check on my book? Um, what do you guys say about that? I'd be curious to hear what Sean has to say about this, actually. <laughs> I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Uh, thanks, Jody. Just on the other side of that, George, I just saw a post on one of my Facebook groups of an author begging and imploring everyone to not buy his book. And I had to do a double take, and I looked at it, and, you know, he got me. I clicked on it, and then he proceeded to explain what his publisher did is the book was barely out. And then his publisher said, well, look, you know, all the stuff we made an agreement with this AI company and all your stuff's been trained. We used your whole book to train it. And it's basically public domain right now. 
and he got lawyers involved and and then they looked through the contract and it just said hey you have no recourse here because you we paid you to write it work for hire all that stuff and it was all in there so basically his book and a lot of other authors are being used to train said ai and he just said yeah don't even bother buying it here's a link just download my book for free because they trained it on it and it's out there now wow Yeesh. yeah that is a good point um you know a lot of these ai tools are going to get better based That's on insane. training right uh and the data that these ai tools get will be content that is created by by humans and that is going to get levered into creating more intelligent, more knowledgeable AI. So, you know, it does, and I do think that we're already seeing some lawsuits on the part of big publishers that are already going after Google and other platforms, not unlike what what happened in the early days with Google scanning print books back in the early days, there was lawsuits and things like that about Google getting, you know, capturing copyrighted um, material and duplicating it. Um, I do wonder if that's going to come into the, the AI space increasingly. Oh, I'm I mean, sure it you, will. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it will, because if you think about it, mid journey got into the same problem. They started scraping the entire internet for all these images. And now people are creating likenesses of other stuff. So. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's human beings are going to do this because human beings are human beings. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they want to push the envelope and they always want to do that. That's, you know, there's always going to be bad actors out there, unfortunately. Well, so it really, it's, it's all about the protections then. So there well, has to be consequences. Do you want to sound your absolute best when you're being interviewed on a podcast or when you're hosting your own show? I have a podcast episode and free downloadable worksheet called Sounding Your Best as a Podcast Guest off of the audiobrandingpodcast.com main page. Just click on the little square graphic to the left of the player displaying my podcast trailer. It gives you some comprehensive suggestions for where to start or for improving the sound you already have, including the type of microphones to consider and why, ideas for soundproofing your recording environment, and suggestions on how to get the best sound when you're being remotely recorded on services like Riverside FM or Squadcast. Don't let bad audio quality hold you back from being the best podcast guest or host you can be. And of course, if you happen to need voiceover for your intro and outro, feel free to get in touch. I'm happy to help. And now, back to the podcast. Well, Jody, human beings learn from copying each other. I mean, I oh, have four yeah. kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> they learn from each other every single thing. And even if your older brother is telling you, don't copy me, guess what? Younger siblings are still going to copy them. There's no lawsuit against that. You know, that's how human beings are literally taught. Like we learn from reading other people's material and then we have to make it our own or make up our own mind to make our own, you know, a summary of it. Like when the kids are doing book summaries, what are they doing? They're reading an entire book. They're writing it down. So that's what AI is going to do. And that's how you're, you're, you know, teaching. I mean, that's essentially what's happening. Matt, did you have something to add? Yeah, a couple, a couple of things, actually. Uh, Elon Musk did um, retweet a deep fake of Kamala Harris the other night and didn't, discla- didn't disclose it. Uh, Gavin Newsom says he's going to run some uh, legislation through in California to make that illegal. And this is all in the last few days. Um, and then you go down to what I did. I Actually, I was telling you about the client that I had to change her voice and change a few words. And now I have to sort of sit and wrestle with YouTube's terms of service. I think I have to disclose if, if AI has been used in that manner. Um, but to the point about whether or not I write a book and I use AI to do it. No, I mean, if I use Google, I don't have to do that. I, I, I don't think I do anyway. But I think if it's not my own and I'm using another likeness or some other work and using AI to interpret it, I think I would be legally um, forced to disclose that. And if the law's not on the books yet, I think it will be shortly. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I the reason I, I felt I was able to finally tackle a book and not, a, you know, in a proper book, a well-constructed, useful book, not a vanity project or something, 
was that I, at the beginning of the year, I used custom GPT to build my own small language model based on everything I could scrape up of my own. You know, everything I put on YouTube, every webinar I've ever taught, every blog I've ever written. I scraped Facebook for every comment I've ever posted the best I could. I just literally spent, I had a vendetta. I was like, I'm going to find everything and put it in this language model, which has now like 9.8 million words or something. And I was like, that's what I'll use to construct my book. And that's what I've been doing. Yeah. So there's no way to, for me to prove <laughs> that this information is all of my own. Um, but that's what I am doing. And, you know, I, I feel like I'd have no problem whatsoever divulging somewhere in the, on the, you know, inside cover or wherever you put the notes that I did use this type of technology to help build the book. I don't think I would have any problem with that at all. Yeah. And, and it's it, practically the exact same thing for a voice artist who, you know, if you went and scraped pretty much all the work that you've done and voiced, packaged it up to create an AI model, you then can own the licensing of that AI voice and be paid for it. But if somebody else went and did it, the answer would be no. But as yeah. we've already as we've already discussed, you know, some people are out there doing it and saying tough beans. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the difference, right? I mean, we should yeah. own our own IP. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> uh, it, it just it becomes a it's always a consent thing for me. So the the writer that had his work stolen and they made another book from it. I mean, that's not consent. They didn't he didn't consent to that. You know, whatever you put in the contract, that's ridiculous. So, I mean, yeah, there's all sorts of places that this would come into play, but yeah, it's it's a gray area right now and I think they're going to need to get it less gray. Yeah, and so if you use like a, a something as simple as a chat GPT, I've seen a couple of cases where you know, tell me a little bit about this person. And it came back that ChatGPT had, you know, used some of my work on a blog, but didn't, you know, credit me for it. And I thought that was a little bit weird. <laughs> okay, I don't think that's, that's allowed, but I guess it is allowed if, if it's out there on the internet. And I think that's been the argument. Um, but I did notice six months later, when I tried it again, I got, I, the Sound Off podcast got credited for for it as so-and-so made an appearance on the sound off podcast and said this oh good okay yeah well i mean it's something that's going to evolve over time as we use these things more and people test the envelope more <laughs> that's what happens right yeah. that's that's how laws are made <laughs> we test the envelope and then someone objects so uh yeah it's uh it's just one of those things that keeps on evolving and i'm sure this will always evolve uh, are there any tools that, that all of you are using that you want to particularly call out? I mean, dis besides Descript, because we've talked a lot about Descript. I mean, there uh, is Adobe's yeah. uh, podcast um, voice cleanup tool that's worked really wonders, like podcast.adobe.com. Enhancer. Upload your audio. Yeah, the Enhancer. It's really good. I, I use, use it a it. lot. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> There's one on the Mac <laughs> platform called Hush. And I guess because it uses the, you know, you know how the processors on computers, they have specific sections designed to do specific kinds of tasks, mm -hmm. right? There's general processing, there's graphics, and now there's AI or machine learning, uh, whatever you call them, cores. So this, this thing called Hush uses those, those special cores that are proprietary to Mac silicon based uh -huh. computers. So you can only use Hush on, uh, you know, a modern Mac with that core, but it's quite remarkable um, and, and how well it works. It's really good at dealing with variations and mic technique, moving around the mic, you know, further and closer. It, it's, it's kind of spooky. Um, and, and I've used it once in a blue moon when something is a total mess and I don't feel like re-recording. In fact, one of my own videos that I finished and <laughs> didn't listen and check, and I was recording the mic that was two feet away, uh, not the one I thought I was using. Oh, and I used, I don't remember <laughs> if I used Hush, but I used something like Hush to kind of correct for it. And I was like, well, that's one way to deal with that problem. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but I did it anyway. Yeah. And, um, you know, so these tools are, are getting quite remarkable. And then there's ones that use GPU on the PC end because of the GPU processors from NVIDIA. 
I don't remember the technology, but you guys on PC would probably know better. There's some pretty incredibly good real-time processing engines that run on GPU that use machine learning and stuff like that. I know that in the second part of Jamie Muffet's interview on my podcast just recently, he did an example of a piece of an interview that he did with someone that he had to clean up a lot, <laughs> like majorly, like the guy was talking five feet from his microphone in an echoey right. room. <laughs> and he cleaned, I think it was Adobe that he was using. I, I think that was it. Uh, but he he mentioned that and there was a side by side comparison of the two in that podcast episode. And oh, my God, <laughs> it was <Right>. incredible. <laughs> it was just right. incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're going to hear these tools used more and more because we know to listen for them. It's kind of like I listen to restored recordings of transferred from 78. I know we're going off topic a little bit, but transfers of music and performances from 78 RPM records that were recorded before, you know, modern technology, electronic recording or electric recording. And they clean them up. And I'm wondering, gosh, what's the to what point do we clean them up? Because now with AI, we could now do a second restoration that's way beyond what we could have done traditionally and make it sound like it was recorded in a studio. Right? Yeah. Should, should we do that or not? You know, yeah. Sean weighs grace. Yeah. Anybody good question. Yeah. Sean, what do you think? I, uh, I, I completely agree with all of this. There, there's sort of a subtle difference though. The plugin I use that I mentioned earlier, uh, DX revive, and it, it does actually a couple of things. And yes, as George was saying, these use the efficiency cores on the Mac, and it really, really makes a difference as far as speed and, and doing a lot of different things. And as you can see from the, uh, the name Revive, although it is getting rid of, of, of background noise and, and a bunch of other things, there's also something else it's doing as far as generative content. So it's based on AI, but what it's doing is... You know, they say it's a speech restoration plug plugin, but it'll get rid of background noise and echo and that sort of thing in a bad recording in a room. But what it does is it doesn't just merely filter the signal. It identifies and then it reintegrates missing frequency components. And this is with the AI from the from the plugin and using the efficiency cores. And it is pretty intensive, but when I hit the button to render it, it's depending on the length of the file, but it's using those efficiency cores. It's doing very well. So as far as AI goes, again, Adobe and you have all these other ones, Isotope's been having sort of pseudo AI for quite a while, but a lot of these newer tools, they're putting in missing frequencies also with filtering things out. Like it's getting to the point now where I'm, if I'm listening to something or I'm helping somebody record something, I just know how crappy I can let it be and I know what I can do to fix it as opposed to interrupting the flow of the interview or stopping or, or just losing momentum in, in the podcast. I go, yeah, okay, this is a six. It's pretty bad, but I know I have the tools to restore this. Just let them go and let's get a good flowing podcast. So it's only going to get better as people were mentioning too. Yeah, uh, it's a really interesting topic. And I know that AI is going to explode even more in the next few years. Um, I was just recently watching a Diary of the CEO interview with a fellow named Mo Gadat. And uh, he mentioned <laughs> he mentioned that AI are going to get to a point where their intelligence is 10 times, 100 times, a million times more than humans. And <laughs> he says, best case scenario, they just go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> they just decide we're not really worth it and they they just leave and do their own thing. <laughs> so I don't know what the future holds. Hopefully, um, you know, we're not uh It could go the other way, Jody. I and, uh, yeah. And, and what what and it's already starting to happen. I think we found our first uh, our first moment here where the AI bots are gonna fight the AI bots. Oh, and they're going to fight each other. I see. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is if you go to write your resume mm -hmm. and you you use ChatGPT or whatever it is, some AI to do it, and your cover letter the same way, you send it to a company 
who are using AI to filter out all those uh, you, you, those resumes that are coming in. You've got bots versus bots. So yeah. maybe maybe they'll they'll kill they'll all just knock each other out. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I just hope we are not collateral damage. <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> I wonder if I'll live long enough to find out. Yeah, I don't know. Things are changing really fast. <laughs> oh, well, the question that I have is, sure, all this AI is getting smarter and smarter, but you can also take a, a, the example of somebody who's done double PhDs in the same subject matter, but they're not good at other things <laughs> in life. You know, it's, it's, it's a matter of how good are you at one thing, but everything else... And they're really good at and, and kind of show goes to show, like as an introvert myself, I'm really good at designing and all of this, but I'm not good at conversation at all with people, <laughs> right? Yeah. So is that what AI is going? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll have to have another one of these conversations in, I don't know, six months, a year, <laughs> see what's happened. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Thanks so much to Tony and Jen Tafoni for their generous support on my Buy Me A Coffee page. Their encouragement and kind words for me and the show mean a lot. Plus, I know that most of you, if not all of you, know that I'm a voice actor, but I do love to recommend my talented colleagues as well, and Jen is definitely one of those. You can find her on her website at jentafonivo.com. That's spelled Jen, T-O-P-H-O-N-E-Y, V-O.com. I know she'll do a great job for you. Thanks to both of you for brightening my day, and I'm really glad you're enjoying the podcast. Thank you so much for everyone that's been here. This has been a really interesting conversation, and I look forward to sharing it with more people. And uh, if there's anything that anyone wants to say before we depart, uh, by all means, uh, go ahead and let us know your thoughts. The, the AIs will never replace human ingenuity, human creativity. I don't think, and that, that that's a good thing. And I've been doubling down on my quote unquote humanity, you know, using the right brain, creating human things. Sure, yeah. yeah. I agree that humans will always want to work with humans and that we're going to always favor it in a lot of ways, especially because of the spontaneity, the creativity, the vibe. Mm -hmm. Kids love to use the word vibe, but we want the vibe and AI doesn't have the vibe. Kids, Kids are really good at detecting AI really good at it well they live they, with they it all the time yeah they pick it out law way before their parents so they're really tuned into it so i think that's what's going to keep it at bay in terms of being a true creative tool for for really a long time i hope yeah okay. <laughs> leslie blake in the chat is saying humans are my favorite <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i but agree I leslie wonder, <laughs> yeah, i do wonder if um if this really gets back to how much control humans have over over the AI, um, mm -hmm. and how um, honest and truthful and ethical the humans allow AI to be, um, yeah. I think that's the bigger question. Is that I think we're seeing early signs that the the, the mainstream AI platforms um, there's already thumbs being put on the, pushed on the scale of um, the content that they generate. Um, well, you know, they're certain... copying us too, right? Well, they are. Um, that's that's mm -hmm. true. Um, but I do think that there are concerns mm -hmm. um, that are rational the more you really think about them, that, that, you know, powers that be, whoever those might be, may not want necessarily us to have the full truth about things that are going on in the world. And That's they may want the to thing. put yeah. the thumb on the scale of, of things just like what we're seeing to some degree with the mainstream media right now is that I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't always feel like I can trust what I'm being told mm -hmm. and on all sorts of topics these days. And I wonder if that's going to happen to AI as well. Yeah. Janine, did you have something to add? Yeah. I was just adding that uh, the other day I was replying to my wife uh, as a text message and my son's like why are you why are you, why are you typing like ai I'm like what do you mean cuz i'm giving the commas the punctuation 
I'm like that's how I type. You know? <laughs> yeah, we spell out the words. The one, right? Us yeah. oldsters still spell right? out the words. We spell out the words. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, AI will use emojis in its yeah, writing. Yeah, I too. know too many right. emojis. <laughs> right, and that's also kind of like one of those things that um, makes you wonder a little bit, right? Yeah. Well, they're copying us, right? They want to seem more human. <laughs> So I, I guess if there's a lot of humans that are using emojis to write articles, um, mm -hmm. I don't know that there's a lot of examples of that. Though. No, but they are using it a lot in social media. And I think that's yeah. where it's getting it. So yeah, exactly. And, but it's being translated into other forms of longer form content now. Yeah. So, Maybe yeah. places it shouldn't go. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Matt, did you have something else to add? No, but I've noticed that there's going to be a lot more AI talk in the next little while. I just, uh, the Pod News Weekly Review is going to have um, the CEO of Descript on. Oh, okay. This, yeah, this weekend. So James Cridlin, Sam Sethi, I think that comes out on uh, Friday morning, uh, Eastern time, very early. Interesting. And, then, and as I'm sitting here, I've already been pitched by Blueberry to try their new Thrive tools, uh, which they're going to be unleashing in in August. Ooh. So, um, you know, Blueberry's podcast host, and um, that's, uh, that's, that's Rob's Rob's uh, co-host, yeah. yeah, Rob's right. co-host partner uh, there, Blueberry, and he, you know, I think, I think from what I've heard, and Rob, you can correct me, but he's, he's, you know, giving all these tools to the podcasters and those who use Blueberry, so that they don't have to go to nine different places to go yeah. and, and, and access well, this stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what he said uh, repeatedly. He's trying to save his customers money. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Todd's been yes. on my podcast as well, but uh, back then we weren't talking about AI. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's another it's another free trial, and it's like I look at it, it's like one month. I go one month to figure out whether or not I like this. I need three months. Ah, uh, you know, yeah. You, you got to figure out how it works. Well, maybe we can go ask him at uh, Podcast Movement. That's when they're. I'm guessing they're announcing it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, those of you who are going to be there, I hope you have a wonderful time. And uh, I think you just announced it, um, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I think he already announced it, didn't he? Oh, he did already. Okay. Right. Uh, I thought it was, on, and I think it was on your show. <laughs> oh, it was. Yeah, well, it could be. I just maybe forgot. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much to everyone who's been here and and asked questions and talked about this really important topic and given. T tips and tools for all of the people that are listening. And uh, yeah, we, I, I so appreciate all of the information that you've passed along and the great conversation that we've had. I, I appreciate all of you for taking the time and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do this again at some point very soon. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations until next time. 